Hey everyone, welcome to Chet Chat. I'm your host Chetna. We've done some serious globe trotting on this show and for this episode I'm taking you all the way across to a beautiful city called Vancouver up in Canada. And with me today is Naman Shah, who's a second year student at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver. Hey Naman, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. And the first thing I'd like to ask you is UBC and Vancouver and this beautiful place. So tell us what made you choose this university? I actually visited uh, UBC a year before I ended up applying and I thought it was a really beautiful city. It's actually even voted as one of the best cities to live in of the last 10 years. Oh, okay. And uh, I think I was really interested in engineering, so I think the faculty over there is pretty developed and there are lots of professors who have a lot of experience. So having chosen the school, I also understand you've got a full scholarship. Yeah. And that's really exciting. So tell us about it. A lot of my viewers want to know about scholarships. And so tell us, how did you go about applying for this? It's called the International Leader of Tomorrow. International Leader of Tomorrow. Leader of Tomorrow. Leader yeah. of Tomorrow. Okay. And it's open to all international students around the world. And it's based on nomination. So the school ends up nominating you and then you're allowed to send in your application, which includes a bunch of essay questions. Okay. And they look at your grades and your community involvement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh, the scholarship, it ends up covering your tuition and your living expenses oh. minus your parental contribution. Okay, so it's practically like, oh, depends on your parental contribution is optional, right? Yeah. And whatever you say, the balance, everything is, is covered. Right. So when you say leadership, is are they looking at those leadership qualities in your essay when you're applying? Yeah, they're looking at your uh, leadership qualities as well. And, uh, you know, if you've worked with organizations before and contributed towards uh, the community or you, or you have you know some kind of passion right. towards helping society in any kind of way. So how early do you apply, say in the, in the calendar? At what point about did you start applying uh, for the scholarship? I think October, November is the period where you actually start looking into it and you know um, talk to your counselor and try to send in the nomination and look at the essay questions. Okay and it necessarily goes through the school yeah. uh, counselor's nomination. Right, yeah. The first year is a general uh, program where you end up doing courses in all kinds of subjects, chemistry, physics, uh, different math courses, uh, programming, and then second year you have the option of choosing between uh, all the all the departments that are available. Okay, okay. so you are, when you applied, you applied to the engineering school? Yeah. So what made you choose mining engineering? So the mining engineering department at UBC is uh, pretty old and experienced. It's been around for 100 years. Okay. And the professors have a lot of experience wow. and they've, they've worked with different companies around the world and have a lot of uh, research. So that was really motivating. So there are over 800 uh, mining companies that are based in Vancouver. So a lot of them end up coming to campus uh, and they interview wow. students. And because they're really looking forward to employ students at this age, and they all have graduated programs. They employ students while they're at university and when they graduate, you can get jobs with those companies right after you're done with university. Okay. So in that way it's pretty helpful and even though like the oil market is not that great right now and right. the prices aren't great, there are right. still uh, companies coming in and taking students. Oh wow, so I think it's a, it's a great sort of niche that you've chosen for yourself at the right place that you are in. So tell us about the structure of the program. Yeah, so after, after your first year you have kind of a standard timetable, so you do courses and fluid mechanics and um, different math courses as well and then uh, courses focusing on techniques and mining engineering and uh, so in mining there's the, the raw material and there's you know processing and then there's the market and then how uh, the economic conditions surrounding it right. and then there's also the aspect of sustainability and the environment right so the right. courses focus on all these aspects okay. and give you you know a complete perspective And this is a four-year program? Yeah, it's a four-year program and uh, we have co-op. So that's, uh, uh, that's another uh, 20 months that's added to your degree. You can complete it in five years with co-op. So that's work experience while you're actually studying at university. Hey, so let me understand this. This is four years, like 48 months, yeah. thrown in 20 months of working. Yeah. And then expanded to five. So you're cutting short your class yeah. hours. Yeah. And you can do that anytime or after the first two years or how does that work? Yeah, so admission to the co-op program is given to you after two years. Okay. And then uh, normally uh, at, during the summer of after your second year, you start your co-op placements. 
and then you can work depending on what kind of terms are awarded to you. You can work with any uh, anywhere between four months and sixteen months at one time. At a go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you actually have to get admitted into that co-op program. Not yeah. everyone is eligible for it. Yeah. And is that subject to a certain GPA again, or is it essays, or how does it work? Yeah, you need a minimum of sixty percent to be considered for admission to the co-op program, and then okay. there are a bunch of workshops that help you strengthen your, uh, you know, communication skills and uh, help you get better at interviews and you know improve and polish your resumes. Right. And then after you complete all those workshops and attend all the mandatory sessions, they will let you know if you're into the co-op program. And this is super. You get to work with a, a number of companies. So four months to 16 months, yeah. at least two companies I'm guessing you work with. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of students who get really good offers, you know, electrical engineering students who get hired by Tesla all the time. Wow. And they go for 16 months straight away because it's a really good opportunity to work with, you know, such a good company. And then there is a lot of scope for development in those 16 months. You can start off, you know, at a junior intern level and even go on to become some kind of manager in those 16 months. So. That way you can, you know, stick with one company or you can, you know, in mining, for example, I could, I could work with like, you know, a gold based company for four months and then a diamond based company and then, you know, oil sands for another four months. So that way you can have diversity as well. So UBC is this large uh, public university with yeah. loads and loads of students. Yeah. So what are the pros and cons of being in a place like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you when you first enter university and you find out there are like forty seven thousand students, you know, you always undergrad undergraduate students. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's kind of overwhelming, and right. and you always have that thought: How am I going to make friends? You know, how am I going to form a study group? And there's this specific program called Jumpstart, which is uh, okay. which is for international students. So the first month, you actually end up staying at university. The academic courses haven't started yet and you kind of get your banking and phone stuff sorted and you know you roam around the city and get used to everything and all other international students are also there so you okay. can you know bond for a month that's one month for you to get to know who's around you and make friends and then you start with your courses and going forward so looking at class sizes professor interaction how does that work yeah so for i can speak for engineering because in the first year courses um, since everyone ends up doing the same courses, you have classes with over 300 people. Oh, okay. And um, you know, if you're if you don't make it in time, sitting at the back row and not interacting with the professor can be challenging. I personally like to you know study in a space where I can ask questions and speak to the professor. Right. So that is a challenge. But then uh, the professors are really welcoming, and they you know they're always there to interact with you, and you can contact them. And even if you can't meet them during their office hours, they'll sit with you for a cup of coffee whenever. Okay. And I'm doing this thing called peer assisted study sessions. Peer assistant study, so you're actually teaching uh, others? Yeah, you, you don't actually teach them, but you facilitate sessions and you kind of organize uh, one and a half hour of study material for students to go through. Uh, and I, I'm doing it for a physics course, so oh, wow. that's supposed to be a challenging course in first year. So I, I plan out those sessions and students come to it and they kind of bond with other students who are doing the same course okay. and they go through the materials. So talking about your 20 month co-op program and yeah. all those internships, so uh, how is your visa structured as a student? So as a student you get the, you apply for the study permit and that's okay. valid for around four to five years. Right. Most cases it's five years. Okay. And uh, the study permit uh, at least for international students. Also, in most cases, it, you can't guarantee for every single student, but uh, it states that you're allowed to work for 20 hours uh, in, in the university or in Vancouver. 20 so, hours a week? 20 hours a week. Through entire five years? Yeah, through the entire five years, without applying for the work permit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, if you're in the co-op program, right. you, uh, you get a studentship letter, so you end up applying for a st uh, start work permit, sorry. Right. And the work permit actually enables you to work uh, throughout your degree. And right. you can work for 20 months for the co-op program. And you don't really need to know French uh, to work in uh, British Columbia, right? No. Uh, English is the most spoken language, you don't need to know French. and. Okay. Uh, if at all, maybe you need to know Punjabi because that's a, <laughs> uh, there are lots of Punjabis in Vancouver and it's, okay. it's a very welcoming society and uh, lots of different nationalities. Okay. And what are the sorts of career paths you've seen students from mining engineering take in the future? Yeah, so in mining engineering, you can go into processing where you kind of, you know, learn different techniques and uh, try to 
uh, the innovative systems of how to uh, process the raw materials and the ores that are being uh, developed around the world. And you can also go into management, you can study financial engineering and how the market behaves depending on the commodities and okay. how the prices fluctuate. And uh, mining, engineering, it, I mean, a lot of the commodities are there. It's a cyclical industry. It goes up and down. There's a boom and a burst. So there is a lot of study uh, around that. And, you know, that's why management positions are really uh, interesting because students start off at the field and then they understand how, you know, the different techniques work and they go on to higher positions. And there's, okay. uh, there's also a lot of innovations happening in terms of robotics and automation because mm -hmm. now, especially in Australia, you know, you don't have... Uh, trucks that are being operated by, by human beings, they're completely automated, right. so they're, they're doing all the work, so a lot of programming intensive um, stuff is coming in. And okay. the next major uh, thing we're looking at in terms of mining is space mining. Oh. So that's going to come in a couple of decades maybe, but that's a really interesting breakthrough as well. So how far away is campus from downtown Vancouver? It's about 15 to 20 minutes oh, okay. yeah, by car and um, yeah, in terms of transportation it's very easy to get around there's uh, the trains and the buses are there and then you have a university pass which okay. you can just tap in and you can use any kind of you know public transport that's available. So tell us about Vancouver and how the life of the city affects you. Yeah I mean the campus is really huge in itself because if you're accommodating you know at least almost 40 to 45% people are living on campus, so campus life is pretty vibrant as well. And there are lots of restaurants on campus and lots of fun activities, facilities to use, you know, aquatic center and gyms and uh, if you're into sports, there are lots of football grounds. And you, if you're actually interested in football, the Vancouver Whitecaps are based in, uh, they're like a professional football team based right. in Vancouver. Right. And uh, so they're, they're in the MLS, so you have teams from the US coming to compete. So. You know, football players like Porto and people playing for LA Galaxy like Frank Lampard, they were actually training in UBC in oh, the football grounds. Okay, how cool is that? Yeah. So you spoke about restaurants, etc. So yeah. what is your favorite food uh, on campus or outside? Uh, outside there's this restaurant called Widges and uh, it's like an Indian restaurant and it's uh, it's on Camby Street. It's, it's a really fun place to be and you can spot a lot of Hollywood actors over there okay. as well. So, Hollywood actors in yeah. an Indian place? Yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, it's very authentic and the restaurant owner is really, like, really cheerful. I think it would be inclusive. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, we have, I think this year we had about, uh, out of undergraduates, 25% of students are international and it's, you know. Wow, that's large. Yeah, and it's increasing because it's increased by more than 10% of the last two years. Uh, Solid School of Business is okay. supposed to be very well known because the marketing professors they have are are in the top five researchers in the world, and it's it's ranked the number one business school in Canada. And in terms of uh, other departments like engineering, civil engineering is supposed to be the number one um, department in Canada for engineering as well. Okay. If you were to give one sort of unusual advice which no one else would give. What would you say? I would say, you know, if you have opportunities, if you have companies coming in, always give, you know, give an interview because it's really helpful for you. You know, it always helps you better your communication skills and it, it helps you understand where, you, uh, where you're actually standing and how you're, how you're doing. And, you know, even if you're not eligible for that job at that time, you know, you can always learn some skills from the interview. And it's always a, always a good conversation when uh, recruiters come in. Okay. So, Recently, in our, in our second year, so we had, um, you know, Shell was uh, actually asking students to, um, to come to their site at the Albion Sands. So they took uh, almost the whole class, 30 students. It was first come, first serve, but they took us to their, uh, their oil fields in the Albion Sands. Okay. And we were there for two days. It was a free of cost trip, and they flew us all over there, booked us in the hotels, and we got a good tour of all the facilities and the kind of work they do as mining engineers. Wow. So it was really exciting because, you know, you, you see all this, you see all these videos and you hear from your professors, but actually, you know, getting to see what's being done over there and the kind of exciting, you know, technology that they're using 
it was good to see. A lot of people associate mining engineering with, you know, that it's not economically sustainable and, you know, right, it can right. harm the environment, but it, it's a very broad stream and um, mining is just exploration of resources. So it can be exploration of sustainable resources as well. Even companies that are working with non-renewable resources have, um, you know, they're, they're working towards sustainability at this point of time. And um, so the site we visited, they're, they're using this technology called Quest and they just invested a billion dollars and they're trying to, all the carbon dioxide emissions that are taking place, they're kind of, you know, trying to trap the carbon emissions and treat them uh, in, in the ocean. So exciting breakthroughs in, yeah. in that aspect as well. Yeah. And uh, students end up taking environmental engineering after mining as well. That's also an option to kind of work on the yeah. sustainability yeah. side of it. Yeah. Wow, sounds like there's so much happening in your field, whether it's space mining, environmental engineering, and wish you all the luck with your endeavors in future. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle, chatchat101, or at Instagram, chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, Please let me know. Thank you.